Now, in these days, the, the other argument that is brought up an enormous amount is the supposed backwardness of the Bible itself and biblical morality. This happens largely mm -hmm. with regard to, for example, homosexual marriage. Uh, it's been brought up uh, with regard to abortion, which I think is more, again, easily disposable because I think there's a solid secular yeah. argument in favor of, of the protection of human life. But homosexual marriage is the one that, that most often comes up. You also hear arguments that the Bible permits slavery. Uh, so if the Bible is so wonderful, then why are there all these weird sections of the Bible where it talks about wiping peoples from the earth, where it talks about mm -hmm. where it talks about enslaving other human beings? Some things that we would certainly consider moral evils today are contemplated by the Bible mm -hmm. and not banned by the Bible. So why why is that? Well, let me address briefly first this question of slavery. When we hear the word slavery, Ben, we think of slavery as it existed in the American South. And as you know, that is nothing like the system that existed in ancient Israel. In ancient Israel, there was no social safety net sponsored by the state. There was no poverty program. So if a man got himself into a situation where he couldn't pay his debts, he could keep his family together and retain his self-respect by selling himself as an indentured servant to his creditor, until he could work off his debts, and then he would have to be set free. After seven years, he had to be set free in any case. So this was really a form of indentured servanthood. It wasn't slavery as we think of that term. This was actually an anti-poverty program. And in some respects, I think it's better than what we have in modern Western culture, which destroys families, ruins people's self-respect because they're not working. Whereas in ancient Israel, a man retained his self-respect. He worked for an income. He paid his debts. He kept his family together. And that to call that slavery is just a gross misrepresentation. Now, the first thing you mentioned, I've, I've forgotten. Homosexual what, marriage, yeah, same-sex okay. marriage. With respect to some of these other moral questions, I think we need to remember the first premise of the moral argument. If there is no God, then there are no objective moral values and duties. Everything is socioculturally relative. So who's to say that the moral values of a society that discriminates uh, against people and oppresses people is worse than one which is liberal and tolerant? We just sort of assume that the, the liberal values um, are the ones that would be objective, when in fact they're just as relativistic as any of the other ones on atheism. So if we need God to be the anchor point for objective moral values and duties, we cannot escape the question when thinking of moral right and wrong, well, what does God think of this? And if God proscribes something, it seems to me that's entirely within his right. If God were to say, thou shalt not eat beans, uh, or thou shalt not eat pork, that would be our moral duty, and we should obey it. That is his prerogative as the moral lawgiver and the supreme good. And so if God says, my plan for human sexuality is heterosexual marriage, that's his prerogative. And there is no basis for calling that, I think, into question.